That only looks like about a 50 foot drop, so. You'll survive. I haven't dropped anybody yet. Yeah, not yet. Be yet the being the operative yeah. word. This feels weird. Nice work, Johnny. The name Alaska derives from the indigenous word Alekshak, meaning great lands. Sun-kissed by seemingly endless days during summer, there are over a thousand glaciers, three thousand rivers, three million lakes, and an abundance of diverse wildlife in the largest state in the Union, fondly known as the Final Frontier. And taking it all in is a challenge I'll gladly accept. Just let me know what buttons you want me to start pushing. You see all the controls on my side? Yep. These are mine, and see all the stuff on this side? That's also mine. Okay. <laughs> so what you're saying is I get to work the radio. Are you guys ready? Yes. Born ready. Clear. Woo! It's alive! We are ready for takeoff. We are taxiing. And we have liftoff. This is incredible. I honestly kind of don't even feel like this is happening right now. <laughs> this is just the tip of the iceberg. Oh my god. You mean it gets better than this? Oh, much better. There are over 50 million acres of nationally protected park in this state. To put that into perspective, an acre is roughly the size of a single football field. Now picture more than 50 million of them. So if you're looking to cover any semblance of ground, be advised to hit the skies. How long have you been flying for, Leanne? About 15, 16 years now. And what made you want to start flying? Well, I grew up in Alaska, and the only way to see the state is to drive an airplane, because the roads only access maybe 5 to 10% of the total acreage. And now, where's your favorite place to fly around here? Into the Alaska Range by far, because I think it's the most beautiful place on the continent. This is the Alaska Range ahead of us. This is just a tiny piece of it. Thick forests in the lowlands. It's so lush and so green. Sparse tundra at middle elevations. Now, during the winter time, this is all completely covered white. in snow. Yeah. This is absolutely unbelievable. And snow-capped summits, Denali National Park is as beautiful as it is enormous. Whatever problems you're having, you fly around here, and I feel like it'll just all disappear. Just at like the sheer magnificence of what you're looking at. Beauty has always been pretty nurturing for anyone's soul, it's really. Nurturing to the soul. I think that is exactly yeah. what this is. And pilot Leanne Foley of Talkeetna Air Taxi provides flight scene tours of the otherwise inaccessible. Oh, we just landed on a glacier. <laughs> I feel like we're on the surface of another planet right now. Wow! Check out this place. Pinch my face. Oh my God. This is real. This is actually happening. Where exactly are we? We're on the Ruth Glacier in the Don Sheldon Amphitheater at about 5,400 feet, uh, about 50 miles from the office. You come up here, you land. I mean, you can't have a bad day up there. <laughs> I think that went down your pants. Went down my pants. Uh -oh. <laughs> How special is this glacier to you? I think Denali National Park is the most beautiful place in the world. But the crown jewel of the park is the tallest peak in the United States. Topping off at an elevation of 20,000 feet above sea level, Mount Denali, known as the Great One, is so massive that it creates its own climate. And when that weather works its way downhill, you better believe it packs a wallop. Woo! Here we go! This river water comes from where? This river originates on Mount Debra. Mount Debra is one of the three big peaks in the eastern Alaska range. And there's two primary glaciers that feed this river, the Nenana Glacier and the Yanner. The water that we're floating on right now, when was this snow? When was this part of the glacier? This water melted off the glacier less than 12 hours ago. The Nenana River flows north and marks the eastern border of the national park. You can't tame these waters, but aboard one of Raft Denali's 18-foot boats with owner John White and lead boatman Mudflap Estes, you sure it can ride them. Let's go, Rafting! Let's go, baby! Woo! All right, you ready for a little bit of a safety briefing? Yes. Okay, gang, forward two. Just means take two strokes and stop. Try to hit the strokes I asked for. What happens if I got a pee, Mudflap? Can we pull over real quick? It's like Vegas, what happens in that suit stays in there. <laughs> oh, you're saying I should just turn this dry suit into a wetsuit. All right, set ready, forward two. Woo! Now you know what we're gonna yeah. be doing. Does the speed change going through the rapids? Absolutely. It's just a rating scale. You know, class one's just flat. Class two is scattered white water. You can go around it as easy as you can go through it. Class three, you can maybe go around it, but you're gonna have to do it's some It's pulling maneuver. you. It's pulling you It's in. pulling you right into okay. it. Okay. Class four is there are moves you must make. Oh, sh ah! 
there's something about the moment right before and the moment right after you hit that rapid. And when you're in it, you're in it. Get up! Get up! You're scared going up, but as soon as you go down, or you're just in it for the ride. That's all you've got! This is an organic roller coaster, and the cool thing about this one is that it just disappears out of sight, and you don't know what's around the corner. Woo! Battle! So what makes this water special to you? The guests. I mean, I'm just a river guide. The real story is you guys. Lean in! Rafting's a transformative experience. Battle hot dog, baby! Woo! You're gonna go through these insane rapids, but then you have time after to just like soak it all in. That was awesome! I feel like I've been reborn. I love my life! On the longest day of the year, Alaska can receive up to 22 hours of functional daylight, more rays than any other place in the United States. And in the city of Anchorage, visitors flock from around the globe to join locals in welcoming the warming season. Anchorage is the gateway to Alaska. Absolutely, you nailed it. Awesome urban life and natural beauty. It really has it all. Sounds like paradise, man. It is. The downtown summer solstice festival, it's certainly a celebration of summer. It's something we look forward to all year round. It totally meets our mission of making downtown clean, safe, and vibrant. This might be a silly question. I'm from Southern California. Yeah. Why celebrate the sun? We have a saying here in Alaska, sun time is fun time. What do you guys like more? 22 hours of darkness, 22 hours of sunlight. Sunlight. Really? Because I feel like when it's dark out all the time, you can just like sleep and you don't feel bad about this it. This is it. As soon as the sun comes out, the people come out of their homes, they come into downtown and just have a good time. Fanning out from the centralized town square, John Gintu and the team at the Anchorage Downtown Partnership bring together a feast of regional flavors. You guys have a massive line here. Obviously yep. you're doing something right. What's right. the must have here? What should I order? The reindeer. The reindeer, reindeer dog. Reindeer, yes. This is a local delicacy. Specific to Alaska and Anchorage or just Alaska itself? Mostly Anchorage. Okay. Do you like it? I love it. I would come here just to play in the bubbles. Please do. Here it comes. Catch one in your mouth. Come on. Go. Go. Catch him. Catch one. <laughs> to the sun never going down. Yep. And to the party always turning up in Anchorage, Alaska. Welcome everybody to the 2018 Hero Games celebrating our first responders and military members. We've got the log carry. Woo! The farmers carry. Go, go, go! Woo! And the tug of war as well. All we do is when he says go, we just we just hold, just resist. Three, two, one, let's go! go. Oh, 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 oh. Who you going for? Oh, APD! Hey, good job, man. Yeah, yeah. One, two, three, APD! The Summer Solstice Festival in Anchorage is all about community. Oh, good. Here, try this one. It's a celebration of the city itself. Do you like my fox? I do. Oh, what did the fox say? Fox. Am I foxy? You're foxy. <laughs> say summer solstice. Summer solstice. Woo! That is an amazing shot. That's a good one. And a chance for all Alaskans to come out of their long winter's hibernation. Are the bears just now coming out of hibernation? They came out a couple of months ago. They came out either in April or May, and they came out of their den, which is usually around 2,500 foot elevation. They've been hibernating all winter, so they're trying to put weight back on, correct? That's correct. They come to the coast and they find an area like we see here where the tide is out and they can get to the clams. Clams are mussels. Once the grasses start to get green, they'll eat a lot of it. They're omnivores? They're omnivores, yeah. Off Kachemak Bay, you'll come to discover the incredibly inviting city of Homer, Alaska. The spit, a single block that juts out of the sea comes equipped with shops, restaurants, and an invitation for an up-close and personal wildlife experience provided by pilot Michael Hughes, his wife Dee, and their businesses, Alaska Bear Adventures and K-Bay Air. Wow. Aboard a wheeled Cessna 206, passengers are brought into the heart of bear country to admire these formidable and majestic animals in their natural habitat. Let's go. You guys follow me single file and we're gonna go through the grasses here, so watch your step. This is unbelievable. Hey, dude. <laughs> he is chilling. The bears behind us, the ones we see around us, what types of bears are these? Well, these are all Ursus arctis. The common name is coastal brown bear. They vary in coloration from 
almost black to almost white. They also have different fur lengths. They also vary in body type. Like people. Yeah, just like people. It really is amazing how they do not care at all about it. What is it about bears that's so special to you guys? It's just, it's so magical over here. I think it helps people view the world in different ways. I think it helps people just kind of connect to nature. I mean, this is a unique environment to be able to it interact is. with them. It is. It's their place and we get to come and visit them gently and carefully. It's different every day and it's great every day. What an incredible experience. I could never get tired of this view. No. No. You don't get tired of it. No. Seaport city of Seward is striking. Try saying that three times fast and you'll start to get a sense of just how remarkably impressive this piece of the planet can be. Set on the southern shores of the Kenai Peninsula, this region of Alaska is famous for its diverse wildlife and sprawling natural beauty. A chopper's lift and thrust are created by rotor blades that allow the aircraft to take off and land vertically. So in a place like Seward, with pilot Michael Culver of Marathon Helicopters, your access to the untapped terrain opens up tenfold. Wow, look at that. This is unbelievable. I've never been in a helicopter before. What? What's so crazy about Alaska is how it goes from so lush and so green to just barren and icy, like in the blink of an eye. If you want to fly in the most amazing place, come to Alaska. I mean, look at this place. So what you're looking ahead of you there, Johnny, is your glacier. That's it? That's called Godwin. Godwin's looking good. Welcome to the glacier, my friend. Dude. <laughs> Shall we? Back, back on. On belay. Ryan Fisher co-owns Exit Glacier Guides and provides an adrenaline-packed Alaskan adventure with an emphasis on safety. Being able to bring people into this environment. So sick! And kind of show them a little piece of Alaska that is really difficult to get to and that they wouldn't be able to see in any other way. It's pretty special. Until you actually get here and you actually experience this firsthand, you really get a whole different feel for it. But the secret to a successful climb comes down to a talented team of gifted guides like Trevor Kresnar. How do you hold this? So this strap goes where? Between your thumb and pointer finger, and then we just want our pinky all pinky the way to the bottom. Pinky in the loop. Perfect. How are you feeling on that? That only looks like about a 50 foot drop, so. You'll survive. I haven't dropped anybody yet. Yeah, not yet. Could yet be being the operative yeah. word. The big thing is keeping your heels down. Really? Some folks will like go up on their toes. Yeah, and you'll slip out. Yeah. Okay. Leaning back on the harness. Keep yep. your feet nice and wide as we come over the whip. This feels weird. Nice work, Johnny. This is incredible. It really is like a spiritual experience being here. Feet at the same level. Okay. So we're stable, and then our tools one high and one with the Got it. One hand, one hand, then both feet. Different heights? Yeah. All one right. high, one low. It's a lot tougher than it looks, I'll tell you that. Yeah, keep those heels down. Nice short step. Everything about being up here, the air, it just feels crisp and it feels clear. This ice, you can almost feel like the history of Alaska buried deep within this glacier. There's absolutely no way to comprehend this feeling and there is no way to top this experience. It, 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 it's, it's awe-inspiring. There's a sense of satisfaction every time you finish a climb that never really dulls and never goes away. Well, goodness glaciers, boys. Off to our next adventure. Where are we headed to now? We're going to Bear Glacier, my friend. Bear Glacier. Coming in flight. A glacier is in constant motion. It can grow longer or it can recede. How amazing is this? Alaska just always one-ups itself. One way researchers are able to track glacial movement is by monitoring the position of the terminus, which is the end of the ice. Wow. Isn't that crazy? Look at that. That's unbelievable. When the glacial terminus weakens, enormous blocks of ice calve or break off into the sea. 
you're left with hypnotic icebergs, and Guide Maya Hunger of Liquid Adventures gets you closer to them than you ever thought possible. So cool. We're like in a big glass of water surrounded by ice cubes. Exactly, yeah. But these ice cubes are 10 feet tall on the right side and 20 yards wide. And if it's like 10 feet above, there's at least 20 feet of ice below. That's why they call it the tip of the iceberg. Hey. Exactly. What is it about these waters that keeps bringing you back? Oh, it's always changing. You come out every single day and it's different. And how has this landscape that we're currently in, how has it changed? The glaciers are getting shorter. Basically, imagine a river that's running out of water. Okay. Our glaciers are essentially just losing ice. What do you think is the cause of that? The snow that we get in the winter is not sticking around anymore because the summers are warmer. And so our glaciers are also falling in volume as well as power. What type of effect is that having on the local economy in Alaska? It's hard to quantify. One of our number one things people come to see in Seward is the glaciers. As they start to recede, probably tourism the recedes. tourism recedes with it. That looks like a big piece just fell off, huh? Oh yeah. It looks like ice cream. Totally. It's beautiful though. This landscape and these ecosystems have been shaped for so long by having glaciers around. That's one of those things that most people are pretty concerned about is the balance, just the balance of our ecosystem overall. What can the everyday person do to try and save this amazing landscape? Obviously lessening your carbon footprint is great. So buying local actually can also help. If you're eating well, if you're supporting your local community, then you're supporting this up here too. It's all interconnected. Yeah. I think something bit it. I felt something snag it. That was, that was the bottom of the river, dude. Fishing for some is a hobby, a way to pass the time. For others, angling is a profession used to put food on the table. For locals in Cooper Landing, casting out the line on the upper Kenai River amidst the Kenai National Wildlife Refuge is a tranquil obsession that begins with the fly. There is no bait allowed in the upper Kenai. That's correct. So instead of bait, we're gonna tie a fly, grab a hook, grab your feather, and we're gonna lay it right over the top of our hook like so. Grab the end of the line, and we're gonna start winding our thread around the top of that feather. Last step, we're just gonna glue it. There you go. Now what is the purpose of doing this? We're trying to hide the hook. Uh, camouflage. Decent for a first timer, huh? I think that's gonna work just fine. Let's go fishing. But baiting the hook is only half the battle, and dedicated fly fishing guides like Jeremy Lewis of Alaska River Adventures know that catching a fish comes down to understanding them. What we're trying to do here is we're trying to swing this lead weight with centrifugal force, just like you would a keychain on a lanyard, yep. but we're releasing the line and letting it go out into the river. Swing it in a circle and release the line. How's that? Pretty good, try again. As far as fishing's concerned, what's in season at the moment? We have two runs of red salmon, or sockeye salmon. And right now, we are in the tail end of the first run. When you say run, it's because what? They're swimming like against the current yep, to get up to, to, like, to spawn? Yep, run the up to spawn. Then they just pass away and... That's it, that's one it. and that's done. cycle, yep, one and done. So, let me get this straight. They hatch, they take the river out to the ocean. That's right. They spend five years living in the ocean. They then leave, head back into the rivers, and spawn right here. One way I put it is, imagine this. I blindfold you right here, set you free, and say, go find the hospital bed you were born in. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. What is it about fishing? Lifetime obsession. I would rather be standing here swinging this fly, not catching anything, than, than be in an office. I honestly feel like it's like playing a slot machine. That's why the like, gambling's so addictive, because you're like, one more cast, and it might happen. Always time for one more cast. You got Johnny. one! Yes! We did it! We got dinner, boys! My hands are gonna smell like fish now? Probably. That's all right. Wow, the reveal. And look at that. So the policy on red salmon is fish has to be filleted and the carcass has to be thrown back into the river. See, now that is the way salmon is supposed to look. It's so orange, it's, it's actually red. That's right. Well, I mean, that is an absolutely beautiful fillet. Can I just go ahead and just start chowing down? Safe thing to do would be to get this fish cleaned up and frozen first, just in case there's some kind of parasite in there. So you've been coming here for what, over a decade now? Pretty close. Uh, I've been fishing on this river for 10 years. 
I've been guiding on it for eight. You didn't decide to come here full time right off the bat? No, nope, to be honest with you, I just planned on coming up here for one summer. So you were traveling back and forth at first? I was. Mountains, trees, good fishing, just fit like the perfect picture of what I was looking for. So you're essentially like a human version of a, of a sockeye salmon. I'm a migratory animal, yeah, yes. Yeah, man. Wow. It's rich, it's flavorful. This is the way I feel like salmon is supposed to taste. It's as fresh as it gets. There are a million ways to describe Alaska. This place is magnificent. This place is special. This place is alive, powerful, graceful, beautiful. Every adventure I've had here is cooler than the next. But don't take my word for it. It speaks for itself. This season on First Look. Woo! This is Montreal! One of the most difficult things I've ever done. Vegas. I've always wondered where Mediterranean sea salt comes from, and now I know. This spectacular place here. You're looking at flowering female ganja. It's a real sticky icky. This is unlike anything I've ever experienced before. This is your Christmas. Absolutely, 100%. Yellow line before you get in trouble. Yellow line. Obey the rules. It's Minnesota. Yeah. I'm terrible at obeying rules. 